Welcome back. We have special guest Patrice Gordon joining us on the show right now. She is a family nurse practitioner from originally Rossland, uh, but she now lives in the southern interior. Welcome to the show, first of all. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, if you want to meet a true humanitarian and caregiver, uh, Patrice is your lady. Uh, you've been everywhere. Uh, a lot of your work stemming with the Red Cross. I know that you do work uh, where you live uh, with, uh, with people in the interior region. Uh, but you go overseas two or three times a year when needed uh, to help out with uh, impoverished countries and helping with initiatives there. Good for you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. How long have you been doing this for, first of all? I started with the Red Cross. I just had my 10th anniversary with the Red Cross. Good for you. Mm -hmm. And in that time, you've worked in Bangladesh. Uh, you've dealt with Ebola outbreaks uh, in Sierra Leone. You've been to Nepal. Uh, you've been a critical care and emergency nurse in New Zealand. Uh, worked as a fertility coordinator in the U.S. Your resume is long, Patrice. It is. Yes. It is. That's how old I am. No. Yeah. No, that's not it. It's that you've been very busy. <laughs> Anyways, uh, what, what inspires you to be this person? I think I'm really fortunate. Um, I think everyone, when we see what we're, we're inundated with, the disasters that are happening around the world, I think everybody wishes that they could do something to help. And I'm in the fortunate position of being able to. I've got the skills, I've got the support from my employer, from my husband, from my family. So I think I'm really, I'm, I'm really lucky. Yes. Um, and as a family nurse practitioner, as you mentioned, there's so much that you can offer. Uh, we do have some pictures that uh, the Red Cross has sent along for us to take a look at. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about where you are and what's going on in these pictures. Okay. This one is, is very fond memory. That's, um, out, that's in Bangladesh just uh, last month, um, playing with some children outside of our, one of our mobile clinics in, okay. the, in the camp. And what's going on in that picture? If we could go back to it for a second. What, what was your mission there? It was, I was inside uh, seeing patients and helping our team along and there was uh, someone outside playing with the children and I just sat down and started playing the game with the kids. Fantastic. Okay, we can move along to the second picture. What's going on here? This is our team walking into the camp. The, our mobile camps were, you know, up to an hour hike in pretty steep conditions sure. and so that's what's happening. We're just walking into the camp to okay. start our clinic. Okay. And uh, this is quite telling. This is a wonderful photo. The little boy flying the kite, you can see there's just masses, right? Masses of tents and, and uh, it's very, it's a, a heavy burden to look at that. Yes. But there's something incredibly hopeful about the little boy flying a kite that he's made out of trash, right? It's a couple of sticks and a garbage bag. Where is this? And that's in Bangladesh overlooking at, in the camp. Wow. So it's... Would you say despite the fact that there's a camp here, it's clearly a, a fairly impoverished situation, but the kids, are, are they happy? Or like, what would you say about them? This is a child having a chance to be a child. And part of what was going on in that earlier picture of me down with the kids is through our mental health uh, workers that come with us on our teams, we're having, get, helping them learn how to be kids again. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, and what's going on here? Uh, Minister Bibo came and was part came and visited us and this is at the transit center the area where we actually screened people that were incoming from Myanmar coming across the border and Minister Bibo was was really interested uh, in all that we were doing there fantastic good for you and here you are feeding a little baby this is a picture that will warm my heart forever. That little baby's name is Magdalene. That was in Sierra Leone, dressed in the personal protective equipment that was required for to protect us as healthcare workers against Ebola when we were in inside the, the hot zone or the high risk area of the mm -hmm. Ebola treatment center. Mm -hmm. And one last picture here, just one person, healthcare and disaster and conflict zones. I know that you were uh, the winner of the Healthcare Golden Apple Award uh, three years ago in 2015 for your quality of care and support to people in the interior of BC, but what you're doing overseas is incredibly impressive. The Red Cross, of course, making this possible for you to go over. Right. Are there a lot of people like you that are doing this? They go on two or three missions a year and, and go overseas? Absolutely, absolutely. It's like, it's a big family. You know, there's, mm. the, we, I go as a healthcare provider, but there are people that go that are doing other things, whether it's water sanitation, hygiene, um, shelter projects. So there's, uh, Red Cross has a lot of different initiatives overseas in many different countries, but certainly when there's a disaster there is a very powerful response from from the Red Cross family what do you get out of it 
a massive, uh, it, the, it is so incredibly rewarding. It is so, to just see lives getting better. You know, what can possibly be more powerful? Absolutely. Where are you going next? I'll wait and see what they need. Yeah. Very exciting because you never know where you're going. You know that the work will be similar each place you go because that's what you do. You're a healthcare provider, but uh, an amazing opportunity. I know that this evening, uh, that's why you're here today because you want to let people know that you're actually speaking at TRU, uh, giving a presentation of sorts. So tell me what you'll be talking about specifically. I'm, I'm trying to show people that I think we are all overwhelmed by the degree of the rapidity with which disasters come upon us and that are presented in the media. And I, I want to make it more, seem more accessible so that everyone realizes that it's not, there's nothing special about what I'm doing. It is the opportunity to assist with the problems that are happening all around the planet yes. exists for everyone. Yes, absolutely. Uh, hats off to you for doing what you do. I think it's fantastic. Um, how many trips do you think you've been on in your lifetime overseas? Well, for, I've been on four humanitarian missions. Good for you. And more to come, sounds like. Absolutely, absolutely. And just quickly, you're also providing care to people in our part of the world as well. That's right. Who do you deal with? A lot of First Nations communities, I That's understand. That's right. Yeah, I travel to eight different communities. Six of them are in the Tsilkotin First Nation, yeah. in, up in the Chilcotin. And I drive three or 4,000 kilometers a month going, accessing to provide mobile health care to these communities. Good for you. You're a living, breathing example of how people can give back. Uh, I know the Red Cross gives the opportunities that, that people can do this. So if they want to learn more, they can come and listen to you tonight, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Patrice, what an honor to have you on the show. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you so yes. much for having me. Yes, and we'll just provide the details of when and where Patrice is speaking tonight. TRU Barber Center tonight from 6 until 8 o'clock at TRU. If you're interested in coming and listening to our presentation, it certainly will be a good one. CanadianRedCross.ca, more information there. We're back after a quick break. Stay with us.